such a great God somewhere to the east and flank of the world we are already in the afternoon <laughs> going towards evening if you move towards Japan I'm from West Africa I'm located in West Africa if you move towards China Japan they are already going towards the evening already Malaysia Vietnam Cambodia they are in the afternoon coming down to the Middle East they are just around noon. Hallelujah. See, God is a God of variety. And of course, if you go to the western flank of the world, they are still sleepy. <laughs> so what does that tell you? It tells you that our times and seasons are different from one another. 
Don't fret yourself. Ah, my mate is already advancing. My mate is already moving forward. My mate already has children. My mate is married. You don't worry yourself. Everyone has his own timing. We are already up here. It's 9.51. Some climbs of the world, if you move towards California, Hawaii, Honolulu, they are sleeping. It's probably around 1 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> and some are going into the evening. So you know the times are different. So don't worry yourself. Whatever it might be is slowing down your life that uh, is not advanced forward. Just relax. Put it in the hands of God. And God will put a testimony in your mouth. Nothing is ever delayed with God. Nothing. Hallelujah. Can we just pray? Thank you for coming, by the way. I appreciate you. And uh, you have honored God. God will also honor you. Our Father and our God, we bless your holy name. There is none like you. There will never be any like you. You are our Alpha. You are our Omega. You are our beginning and the end. Beside you, there is no other God. Only you are God in the entire planet Earth and the entire universe. And you will remain so eternally. Thank you for this miracle of sleeping and waking today. Thank you for another beautiful day as we march on towards the end of March. We will continue to march upward and forward, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. Father, we thank you for the meetings of yesterday. Father, take over the meeting again this morning. Have your way. Speak through my mouth. Give your people receptive hearts. And as they listen to your word, there shall be transformation in their lives. There shall be deliverance. There shall be victories. There shall be restoration. There shall be fulfilled dreams. There shall be expectations. Fulfill the expectations in their lives in Jesus' name. We soak this meeting in the blood of Jesus. We come against all activities of extraneous spirits in this meeting in the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. The 30th day of the month of March. One day more to go. But the Bible, remember, the Bible says better is the end of a thing than the beginning. So the last two days of this month we usher into your lives unprecedented fulfillment of expectations in Jesus' name. Whatever you are expecting will manifest before the month of April into your lives and space in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. By the way, today by Christian calendar is supposed to be uh, Easter day. Easter, a day of celebration of the death of our Lord Jesus Christ and his resurrection and of, of, of course ultimately his ascension. So it's a very good day to remember that singular sacrifice he did for you and I on the cross of Calvary. That's why we have the topic this morning that says the singular sacrifice, hallelujah, the one singular sacrifice that paid it all, <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, one, just one singular sacrifice paid all for everyone, hallelujah. So, for instance, you, you are owing somebody money, you are owing another person money, you are owing different people money. I know people who owe all kinds of debts all over the place because of challenges of no employment, poverty, and sometimes, sometimes, irresponsibility. I'm not saying that is the case, but sometimes it happens. They owe this one money, they owe this one money, they owe this one money, they owe because of challenges of life. And all of a sudden, all of them come pulling you by the, by the skirts or by your shirt and by your trousers, pants, and say you must pay our money. You have about 15, 20 of them holding you that you cannot go until you pay our money. You are owing this one 5,000. You are owing this one 10,000. You are owing this one 2,000. You are owing this one 1,000. And they say you must pay before we let you go. And somebody comes around and says, okay, okay, leave him, leave him, leave him. I'm ready to pay. They say, are you ready to pay for him? He said, yes. Okay, how much is he owing you? How much is he owing you? Write it down. How much, what's your name? Write it down. How much is he owing you? How much is he owing you? If they put everything together, they say, okay, he's owing us about 100,000. Good. He said, okay. Oh, yeah, all of you. 
come and take your money and he pays them all. All, pays all the debts. You know how the kind of looks that would be on that man who was being held in bondage by those creditors, how he'll be looking in amazement. Somebody he didn't even know came and paid over 100,000 of money that is owing all over the place. Shame, embarrassment, disgrace, and all kind of things. And the man said, okay, you have, have paid all your debts. Okay, what is the business you want to do now so that you won't go and be borrowing money from these people again? And I want to do this business. I want to do this uh, activity. I want to do this. It will make me money. Then I will be making money. I won't go and borrow money. Okay, all right. I'll give you another 100,000. Go and start your business. Hallelujah. You know how elated that kind of individual will be? How excited, how reassuring, how restored his life would have been at that point in time. You know, that's exactly what Jesus Christ came to do for you and me. And that's what we are remembering today. That singular sacrifice. Somebody was also, I heard the story, somebody uh, who had a state-of-the-art car was hit by, by somebody with a dilapidated car. You know, he, he hit the car, the car of the man with the state-of-the-art car, luxurious SUV, and he dented the car very badly. So he, he now held the man, he said, no, you won't go. I'm going to sell this, your dilapidated car, in order to fix that damage you did on my car. I'm going, to, I'm going to sell your car, and I'm also going to lock you up in the police station. And by the, by the time they realized everything, traffic had already built up to the back. It had built up. Somebody now came, and I said, what's causing all this traffic? He now walked all the way to the point where the traffic has started, where there was commotion, argument, and all that. And he said, what's going on? What's going on here? I said, no, this man hit my car, and he, he, can, he cannot pay. He doesn't have money to pay. He's poor. And the man said, how much is the car? How much is the damage? He said, about maybe about 200 and something thousand, blah, blah, blah. And the man that hit the car said, look, if you sell me, if you sell my wife, if you sell my children, <laughs> you can't get one tenth of this money. So he was held captive. He was going to be locked up. His car was going to disappear. Anyway, the man that came to interview said, okay, how much is the... He said, no, 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 he, he can't afford... It. When he was beginning to brag too much about his car, the, man, the other man that said, okay, how much is your car? This is your so-called state-of-the-art car. He said, well, it's worth so many millions and blah, 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 blah. The man said, is that all? He said, yes. Okay, take this amount of money for the amount of your car. Go and buy a brand new one. <laughs> Go and buy a brand new car. And you that hit the car, that, that your dilapidated car, go and sell it. This car that you have just hit, it has now become your car. Drive it home. Go and begin to enjoy it. And even gave him some money to fuel it for some time. Because he knew he couldn't afford the fuel for that kind of car. He said, okay, take this amount of money, go and be buying fuel for that kind of car. You know how that kind of man's life is to change in a jiffy. It's not, it's not even overnight. It changed in a jiffy, in the sprinkling of an eye, twinkling of an eye, he still changed. He drove the car away. He told somebody else to drive his dilapidated car behind him so that he can go and junk it or sell it. He still changed. That's what we are celebrating today. The story of humanity changed on that singular sacrifice. Somebody paid for you and for me. Hallelujah. Easter Friday, they call it. The story, everything changed. Humanity changed. Sickness has been paid for. Diseases have been paid for. 
captivity has been paid for. You know, when kidnappers kidnap people, what do they do? They ask for ransom. That ransom has been paid. Even death has been notified. <laughs> By that singular sacrifice he did because the Bible says he died and rose again. On the third day he rose again. He resurrected. Said, Oh, oh, oh grave, where is thy strength? Oh, death, where is thy power? Where is thy victory? Death has been defeated. Grave's uh, power has been obliterated. Hallelujah. By that singular sacrifice that somebody paid. Okay, you might say, okay, those are long distance testimony. But look at yourself. All of you that are on this platform this morning, your parents paid their prizes for you to get to where you are today. Hey, but no, 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 my parents were not alive. It was somebody else that paid, of course, somebody else paid it. Maybe your guardians, your uncle, your cousin, your this, your, somebody paid the price for you to go to school, to get educated, so that you can get a good job, you can do well in life. Somebody paid the price. Somebody is always paying one sacrifice or the other. And you also, you already, who are, so a lot of you are parents too on this platform right now. You have children, you are paying school fees, you are paying sacrifice on those children. You are sacrificing virtually your resources, your life, your existence for those children. So too, as they did for you, you are now also doing the reciprocating it in the life of your own children. So sacrifices are always being done from time to time. Likewise, in relationship, the husband, the wife, they pay sacrifices for one another. So you cannot exclude sacrifice in the you cannot. Somebody is only speaking of sacrificing for the husband. For instance, if he's not well paid, he's not getting a, a good job, or he's even unemployed, he might be sacrificing out of love and say, oh, well, let me do this for my husband. When he gets restored back to his original position, when he gets a good, good job, he will come back to his feet and begin to do duty as a man in the house. Somebody is always paying. Likewise, the husband is paying for the wife. They are paying for the children. And God knew that. God who had instituted all of this from the beginning had known that. When the first Adam fell, and he knew that in order for him to restore man back to himself, a sacrifice has to be paid. Hallelujah. That's why you see in the secular world, they always say nothing goes for nothing. In the secular, nothing, you don't, you don't, there's no free lunch anywhere. You have to pay a price for it. If you go to the restaurant, you say, oh, what, do you, what food do you have? You have this, you have that, okay, give me that one, give me this one, and give me a bottle of water or a bottle of wine or something. You will just eat the food, drink the wine, and just walk out like that. If you do that, they will call the police on you. They had paid a sacrifice to get the food ready for you. You are also going to pay a price for that food. Whatever price they place on that food, you have to pay that price. Hallelujah. So, life is a, a combination of sacrifice and sacrifice. Hallelujah. You are always paying a price for one thing or the other. You want to fly in a, in, a, in a plane, in an aircraft? Okay, how much is it to so, so, and so, and so, and so? They say this is the price. You credit the account, and they issue you your ticket and your body pass. You go to the airport, you board the plane, they look at your body pass to see your eligibility to travel and having paid. Yeah, you get on board, and they fly you. So nothing technically goes, and God could not give what he does not have in order to pay for you. He had to sacrifice his only begotten son, our Lord Jesus Christ, on your behalf. Because in the spiritual realm, I'm sure you know that, blood is the demand for ransom. Blood, blood, blood. 
<laughs> we are sinned. He does not qualify for pardon. He does not qualify for mercy. God will say, no, <laughs> a price has been paid for him. My son, Jesus Christ, has paid the price. So I have no choice but to forgive him. He has asked me for mercy. I will forgive him. A price has been paid. Somebody has paid the price. Jesus Christ of Nazareth has paid the price. And the, those in the kingdom of darkness will say, well, <laughs> well they'll, be, they'll be incapacitated. They have no choice but to release him. Of course, you know, if you go to all kinds of uh, activities and those uh, they always do one sacrifice or the other. I'm talking of the ignorant ones. For the Christians, they don't need to do any more sacrifice. All the sacrifice that needs to be done once and for all for the rest of their lives has already been done. Jesus Christ has paid the price. And I wrote in my system, is coming out on tomorrow. What I'm saying now is coming out tomorrow on my TikTok. I wrote there, I said, if you're coming to the consciousness of the power behind that sacrifice that was paid for you and for me, if you come into the fullness of that consciousness, <laughs> everything that is negative in your life, not of God in your life, will locate yeah, bye -bye. everything that's powerful and profound. But only if you come into that consciousness, there is a level you get in life, you get to a particular consciousness, like Jesus in the book of Philippians chapter 2 verse 5, there he said, let this mind be in you, if this mind and consciousness of that sacrifice Jesus Christ did for you on the cross Daddy. of Calvary is well Daddy, engraved Daddy. in your heart, you see that no challenge in life can never overcome you again, no sickness can bring you down. The diseases will see you, they know you know them already, they will disappear. Sicknesses will see you and push you away. Challenges that bring other people down. Ah, so, you know, hey, hello, Con. Show us why. What do I do? Show you know why. In great consciousness of the power of resurrection, the power of 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 the and those challenges will see to recognize and bow. If they don't bow, they will come under your feet. Hallelujah. So come into the consciousness of that power. Why do you think some people go out and be using human sacrifice here and there to make money? And they believe that when they use human sacrifice, they can make money. Some of them it works for them, some of them it doesn't work for them, but they are into horrible shun. What the Bible refers to abomination, horrible abomination. And of course they won't go scot-free. They will pay dearly for it. Because no human being has any right to take any human being's blood. No human being has any right to take any human being's life. Not to talk of wanting to use that life to make money. Money that is transient. Money that only lasts for a while. Money to God whom, whom you are sacrificing to will not guarantee you that they will give you enough even to, for that sacrifice you have done. So is it worth it? Sacrificing human ritual for this, for power, for fame, for this, for that. What they have literally done is that they have locked themselves up in the cage of disaster and wrought against God. <laughs> and of course, they will pay dearly for it. For the Bible says, whatever a man sows, they shall reap. And I've also said it before, I will say it again. Every power, every fame, every wealth in the world anywhere in the world is sustained by the blood 
That's why you as a Christian, you must come into the consciousness of that price that was paid for you. And run with that sacrifice, with that consciousness to excel in life. Because you know, a price has been paid for you to excel. A price has been paid for you to get rich. A price has been paid for you to get wealth. A price has been paid for you to get healing. A price has been paid for you to get power. A price has been paid for you to everything in, you might ever want in life. That price has been paid. Hallelujah. So you don't need any other sacrifice. You don't even need to sacrifice the blood of a, 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 a bird or a goat, or a cow, not to even talk of human, you don't need it anymore. Hallelujah. And by the way, what is sacrifice? Sacrifice is what a lot of people do for appeasement, for help, for support, for favor, for power, for money. People go into all those sacrifices for different reasons. And of course, the sacrifice unto God too is also in line with what, what I've just enumerated. The only thing is that the one of God is the right one. Every human being should follow that path to appease God. What sacrifice? Your, you even sacrifice your time, your, your life, your energy, your what resources you can sacrifice them because somebody has already paid for you to have all of them in the first place so you too you must do sacrifice unto god not your blood or your life or your children or your no 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 you pay that sacrifice through what has been done for you and the result of what you get from what has been done for you, you use those ones to as sacrifice unto God. The resources, the energy, your time, your power, your whatever that has been made available to you through the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, you use those ones to sacrifice to God. Hallelujah. In appreciation of what he has done for you. There's a song that says, you've done so much for me, I cannot tell it all. You've done so much for me, I cannot tell it all. God has done so much for every human being, every human being on the planet. Nobody has any right to complain. You, it doesn't mean you don't have challenges. Challenges will come. But one thing is sure, in your appreciation of what he has done for you, those challenges will dissolve. He will attend to them and put testimony in your mouth concerning them. Hallelujah. So let's just quickly look at some scriptures. This man, you are just talking. You are not using any scripture. And let me use some scriptures for you so that it doesn't look I'm just talking off my head. I'm talking out of scriptures. What the Bible says, that is the word of life. Let's start with Genesis. Then we move to Corinthians. Genesis verses. Look at what it says here. And Israel took his journey with all that he had. Genesis chapter 46. I start from verse 1. I read from verse 1 to 3. And Israel took his journey, which was Jacob before, with all that he had, and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices unto God and of his God of his father Isaac. And God spoke unto Israel in the visions of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, Here I am. And he said, I am God, the God of thy father. Fear not, go down to go down into Egypt, for I would I, I will there make of thee a great nation. I'm sure you know the story. When he realized that uh, his son Joseph was alive, who was sold as a slave into Egypt at that time, and he was alive, he's now the prime minister, he was now the prime minister of Egypt at that time. He said, God now gave him a reaction. I said, don't, don't bother yourself about whether to go or not. Go down. Your son is there. I will take care of you there. Hallelujah. So he did a sacrifice unto God. I'm about to unpack on this journey. What's your take concerning this journey? So it's also it's very instructive to you too. You want to build a house. You want to buy a house. You want to buy a car. 
you want your children to go to school and succeed there, sometimes you might just do a gift unto God, which is like the sacrifice this guy did here. Give God a gift and say, Lord, in appreciation of I want to get this promotion, a gift in appreciation. Maybe in your church you don't give a gift, give a donation, or do something to God as sacrifice. And you know God loves sacrifice. That was after the sacrifice God appeared to Israel and said, don't bother, go to Egypt. I will do you good there. Hallelujah. So you, something is like diff, very difficult for you. The, there is no solution. Something is not, things are not happening. Hey, give God a sacrifice. Do a sacrificial offering. Give it, give it to, go, give it to a, a, a man of God that you know is genuine. Give it, God. I just want to give you this. Pray for me concerning this my desire, concerning this my daughter that wants to get married, concerning this my job, concerning this my house I want to buy. You know, I just give a gift in the church or somebody. You just do something, a sacrifice unto God. God accepts it. <laughs> if you want to be set free from that turning the same roundabout, what do you have? Go to church and give an offering and say, Lord, I use this as a point of contact for me to be set free from joblessness, from poverty, from shame. This little one, it could just be a token. And use it as a nexus. Let there be a nexus, a connecting rod that will connect you to the heart of God and for the blessing to come. Just go and do it. That's what this guy did. And God appeared to him the third day and said, you can go. The coast is clear, the road is clear. You remember the case of, uh, what's his name, uh, Solomon. He sacrificed so many burnt offerings to God. Over a thousand burnt offerings he gave to God. And God had to appear to him and say, what do you want? And, you have done this so much sacrifice for me, what do you want? Hallelujah. And God gave him a blank check. He said, just give me wisdom to rule your people. He said, no, don't worry. You have asked for wisdom, I will give it to you. But what you did not even ask for, I'm going to also give you. Hallelujah. Now to, we have to, talking of all the sacrifices of those people. And of course, you too. And you can imagine how glad the heart of God was and still is and will forever be when Jesus sacrificed his blood on the cross of Calvary for you and I, in order for us to be set free from all forms of captivities and bondages, from all forms of sicknesses and diseases, from all forms of shame, embarrassment and disgrace, from all forms of lack, want and hunger. Do you remember how glad, I will read it for you, Jesus Christ now is seated on the right hand of God. Hallelujah, he is taking his rightful place in heaven because he paid the price. So in order for you to also sit comfortably with God while in your journey with earth and succeed and excel, from time to time just give him a gift. Lord, for this house I want to build, for this house I want to buy, I'm going to buy it for so much money, but just use this as a point of contact to bless me. So you might need to do that from time to time. Hallelujah. So we read uh, Genesis 46, 1 to 3. Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Hallelujah. So he paid that price for us in order for us to be. That's why you can see me talking to you today. That's why you can see so many ministers of God speaking the word of God across the globe. Left to those in the kingdom of darkness. For even speaking the word of God alone, they want to kill them. But they can't. They are already incapacitated because a price has been paid for such people. And for you too. Left to them, they would have killed me. But they can't. Somebody has paid the price for that killing. And so if they say, they want, hey God, they, this, they, they, they want to attack me, God says, the price has been paid. You can't shed this blood. Same with your blood. They can't shed your blood anymore. They can't kill you. Because somebody 
has paid the price with his blood. They want to kill you. They say, go and take the blood on the cross of Calvary. The blood is already being shed. They are going to take it. You want my blood? Go and take the blood. My blood is on the cross of Calvary. Go and take it there. <laughs> and they dare not. They dare not. So they run away from you. Hallelujah. Five verse seven says, Purge out therefore the old living, that ye may be a new lump. You are no longer that your old self. When you are not in Christ, now you are in Christ. You have become a new creature, a new life, a new being. As ye are unliving, for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed already for us, for you and me. First Corinthians 5 7. That's what we are celebrating today. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 9, 26. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 26. What does it say? Hebrews chapter 9, 26. 26 says, For them must we often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world, has he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. He has paid for your sins. He has paid for that uh, misdemeanor which you were doing before. So, if somebody has paid for it, like I gave you the example of somebody who was owing about 100,000, and somebody came and paid for the 100,000. And what did he do? He gave him another 200,000. Go and start your business so you don't go back to those people and be begging them and owing them money again. Somebody has paid for those sins of yours. Don't go back into that sin. Don't go committing sin again because it has been paid for. There will come a time you keep sinning, you keep sinning, that blood will no longer answer for you. You know, you know the blood of Jesus is a spirit. Your own blood too is a spirit. You yourself, you are spirit. So, keep going back to the same vomit after it has been paid for. It's an abomination. That's why we always preach, stay away from sin. The price has already been paid for the sin you committed before. That's why God forgive you. Because of the blood is seen on the cross of Calvary. So if he has paid for it, why go borrowing money again? Why go into sin again? And he has set you free for you to excel in life, for you to make advancement forward. He has paid the way for you. He has cleared the way for you to take quantum leap. So why are you going back into your vomit? And this is not just for you and me, it's for the entire humanity across the globe. So he sacrificed of himself. And do you remember that blood? He said that his blood, because it's the blood of the uh, the, the, the the blood of himself. His blood has been paid. So that blood goes with what you call the eternal spirit. It's not subject to domination, it's not subject to decay, it's not subject to going black. You know, each even human being's blood, every human being's blood is red. If any human being dies today, within minutes, within hours, all the blood inside of him will turn black. But the blood of Jesus has not changed. No. The blood of Jesus it remains the same eternally. Eternally. From that day it was shed, it said, look at what it says in Hebrews 9.13. Hmm. Hallelujah. Look at it. Look at what Hebrews, let's let's start from Hebrews 9, 13 and 40. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of Haifa sprinkling and unclean sacrifice to the purifying of the flesh. Look at what verse says. How much more shall the blood of Jesus Christ, who through the eternal spirit the, underline that who through eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, 
purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Hallelujah. Through the eternal spirit, the eternal spirit is flowing in that blood. That's why when they call for communion in any area, in churches, or even in your house, you can have communion. Taking the blood of Jesus and his flesh symbolically with whatever you have around there, with a drink and with the flesh of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, when you take it, you are taking the fullness of Christ inside of you. And anything that is a stranger in your body, we have no choice but to disappear, to fizzle away because of the power in the blood. Hallelujah. So come into that consciousness. I wasn't even planning to read this verse 13 and 14, Hebrews 9, 13 and 14, flowing with an spirit. But the Spirit of God just led me there. Hallelujah. That's a powerful blood. Enter into it. It gives deliverance. The blood of Jesus delivers. The blood of Jesus restores. The blood of Jesus gives victory. The blood of Jesus speaks righteousness for you. The blood of Jesus gives speaks of deliverance for you. No, you can't take that guy. I've paid my blood for him. Set him free. Hallelujah. And your captors will hear his word and say, You have to go. The one that paid the price for you has commanded us to set you free. You have to go. So you walk away from bondage, you walk away from captivity, you walk away from shame, you walk away from sicknesses, you walk away from diseases. Because you have been set free. The Bible says, whoever the Son of God says free is free indeed. You have been set free by the reason of the blood. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 10, verses 10 to chapter 10, verses 10 to 13. And I close with this. Hallelujah. I close with this. 10 to 13. What does it say? It says that by the by the which we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Offering of the body of Jesus Christ once we have been sanctified. That sacrifice he did for us has washed us away of all our own iniquities. Our iniquities which is making us unrighteous in the sight of God has been washed away by the reason of the sacrifice Jesus Christ did with his body on the cross of Calvary. We are now presentable to God. God is now able to see us through that blood, through that sacrifice, and favor us, and help us, and deliver us, and answer our prayers. That's then. 11 says, and every priest stands daily, ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifice, which can never take away sin. You know, in the olden days, they used to sacrifice birds, goats, rams, and all that to sacrifice for sins that you had committed against God at that time. But those things were not permanent. They only do temporary things, and okay, all right, but look at what it says there. Verse 12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, one sacrifice for sins for I didn't say it, is the scripture that says it, the book of life that says it, forever sat down on the right hand of God. Hallelujah. You know, somebody has paid the price for you and is satisfied with it. Has paid the price. He's now sitting on the right hand of God. Likewise, if your son, your daughter, does something great, wonderful for you, he buys you a ticket, first class ticket to travel all over the world, puts in first class hotels. Each time he comes, you say, No, come, 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 my son, come and sit here by my side. Come and sit on my on my right hand here. That was what Jesus Christ did for you and me. God said, No, you have done it all. You have paid it all. Come and sit on my right hand. 
Hallelujah. You know, he said, sacrifice seed forever on the right hand of God. Verse 13. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his food to... What did I tell you earlier? I said, if you come into the consciousness of what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross of Calvary, if you come into that consciousness, every challenge in your life, every sickness, every disease, every shame, every embarrassment, what will happen to them? They will relocate to underneath your feet. <laughs> That's what Jesus Christ said. Expecting his enemies be made his fools to, they will locate to underneath your feet. And whatever relocates to underneath your feet, what do you do to them? You walk over them. You step on them. Anything you step on has no power over you. I'm sure you know that. No power over you. That's why the Bible says in the book of Psalm 23, verse 4 or 5, it said, When you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you shall fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. That means when you are walking through the valley of the shadow of death, death is a spirit. On, on, for you to walk through that valley, Death will have to stretch itself across that valley. Hallelujah. And you walk over death to cross the valley to the other side of excellence in your life. Hallelujah. Oh, man of God, what are you talking about? Well, that's the truth. That's the mystery of the workings and operations of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. My time is up. I appreciate you. I cannot continue and continue and continue because I appreciate the sacrifice you have made by spending your time in His presence again this morning because you have honored Him. And I always say to you, if you have honored God, God will also honor you. And when God honors you, nothing on the planet heart has any, has any power to dishonor you. Hallelujah. So the consciousness of this reality, go and enjoy yourself in this beautiful day. Go and enjoy yourself this weekend. And go and enjoy yourself forever in the presence of God. Because your victories are permanent by the reason of the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary for you. Your victories are permanent. Hallelujah. But adventure, you don't know him and he doesn't know you. You, are, you don't belong to him. That blood he did on the cross of Calvary for you will not work for you. It only works for you, for those who belong to him. So if you want to belong to him and you want the blood to work for you, to speak for you, to avail for you, to fight for you, to defend you, just quickly say after me. Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I thank you for that singular sacrifice you did for me on the cross of Calvary. And by the reason of the blood, I have become victorious. Be my Lord and Savior. Order my step in my places. Whatever you want to tell me to do from henceforth, I will do it. I will renounce all associations with all other gods. I will no longer serve them. Only you will I serve from henceforth. And whatever you tell me to do, I will do. If you have said that, congratulations. Welcome into the kingdom of the Most High God, where you are not permitted to lose a battle. We are you are a winner always. You are a winner always. Find a Bible believing church around you and begin to go. That victory will remain permanent. Fellowship with the other brethren. If there is no Bible believing church around you, hey, look, start a fellowship in your house. Invite one or two friends and begin to share the word of God. And as you share the word of God, you begin to develop spiritual muscles. So the knowledge of what to do at any point in time, when the challenges of life come, or when those in the kingdom of darkness come challenging you, you will know what to do because you have knowledge from the word of God. Hallelujah. By the way, for those who have been blessing me, I want to say thank you so much for blessing me. God will bless you back. You will never know the bottom of the pocket where you are bringing those blessings from. God will continue to multiply you 
enlarge your coast above and beyond your imagination. You will never lack, you will never beg, you will never borrow. You will mean the lend down to nations all the days of your life. You will never be below. Thank you so much for me, for, for coming. I appreciate you all. I'm not saying you should go out of your way to bless me. No, 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 no. If you feel like just do it, if you don't, no problem. <laughs> God is always our sufficiency. But God blesses those who give. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Do have a glorious and wonderful weekend. I will still be back again tomorrow. About the same time. Plus or minus. God bless you. When I hear from you, it shall be good news. When you hear from me, it shall be good news. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Bye.